Every day around the world, some 8.6 million passengers step aboard planes. That's nearly 6,000 every minute. And that number is set to grow. In fact, by 2032, it is expected that passenger numbers will double worldwide to nearly 7 billion passengers per year. Leaders of the aviation industry have been meeting in Geneva, Switzerland to work out how they will be able to cope with this growth and how to do it in a sustainable way. How we continue to cross, crisscross the world, those around the world are going to have that accessibility. Uh, North America, Europe, Asia, we've been enjoying it. As you look at uh, Latin America and the growth that's taking place, Africa and the, and the growth that's taking place, it's, a, uh, it's really exciting being here in Geneva today, but in New York tonight. In fact, the industry's Air Transport Action Group, which organised the Geneva Summit, released a new report looking at the positive role aviation can play in economic growth. The report looks a lot into the economic um, benefits of the aviation industry, but I think that only tells half the picture. And, and what we also like to focus on are the social benefits that derive from the aviation industry. And on a very base level, what we're talking about is the ability of an industry to make the planet a smaller place, to bring friends uh, and family together. The industry urged governments to support efforts to build on the growth potential of travel and tourism. We know that we need to prepare ourselves for more passengers, more flights and a larger fleet. It's vital that governments around the world look to travel and tourism as a way of boosting their tertiary economies and developing what can be a very sustainable industry. However, they must make sure that growth in aviation, as in all sectors, is done with um, environmental considerations. But clearly high on the agenda was the issue of environmental responsibility. There's a big challenge for governments uh, to follow up the ICAO resolution uh, and, now make, and actually deliver a, a global market-based measures scheme. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. It's going to require a lot of goodwill among governments. It's going to require a spirit of compromise and it's going to require them to keep their eye always on that, on that goal, uh, which is a, a common, fair, level playing field um, that will, will regulate this industry's emissions going into the future. Unusually for an industry, the aviation sector has been actively pushing governments to develop a global system to charge airlines for their carbon dioxide emissions. I would say it's very forward-looking and very smart of the international civil aviation industry to be saying to governments, we recognize that our license to grow in the future depends on our ability to cut our carbon pollution. And to say to governments, we have thoughts on how we would like to be regulated in ways that are smart and, and uh, responsive to the needs of our industry, here are our ideas. The Geneva Summit gave industry representatives a chance to show off the many projects that are being undertaken around the world to reduce emissions from aviation. We believe that sustainable biofuels have a critical role to play in delivering the industry's environmental sustainability. And this is a, a new venture. Uh, we're putting our money where our mouth is because we believe the technology has existed for some time. We've just got to turn that technology into a commercial reality. But the question remains, can the industry continue to grow but also ensure it is environmentally responsible? The sky is the limit for the next 100 years of development of the aviation industry. The point is that that has to be done in a sustainable manner, making sure that the growth and the social development that we seek today doesn't harm uh, the environmental um, uh, footprint uh, for future generations.